For many years, car enthusiasts and journalists have labeled Maserati as one of the worst luxury car manufacturers, and with good reason. Since 2016, Maserati has repeatedly earned a low reliability rating in the reliability index rankings, coming at the lowest off the list out of 40 brands. But back when it started, Maserati gained a large reputation for building some of the best cars ever. So how did it all go wrong and are they on the way to take back their crown? Well, before we answer this, let's take a look at the original rise and don't forget to like and subscribe. Maserati was founded by the six Maserati brothers who were passionate about engineering and racing. The company quickly made a name for itself in motorsports with its cars winning numerous races and competitions. In 1926, the company won its first Grand Prix at the Circuito di Alicianda in Italy. And in 1929, Maserati took first and second place in the prestigious Targa Florio race. Over the next few decades, Maserati continued to dominate the racing world, winning races across Europe and establishing itself as a top manufacturer of high-performance cars. By the mid-1930s, Maserati was producing luxury cars as well, and the brand's reputation for quality and performance was solidified. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Maserati continued to grow and innovate, producing a number of iconic models that are still highly prized by collectors and enthusiasts today. In the 1960s and 1970s, Maserati was hit by a number of financial challenges, including rising costs and declining sales. These financial difficulties were compounded by a number of ownership changes, as the company was passed from one owner to the next. This instability and uncertainty took a toll on Maserati and contributed to the company's decline. As Maserati struggled to maintain its financial stability, the company still wanted to focus on racing and continued to invest its funds in the racing teams, which meant that Maserati began to prioritize cost-cutting measures over quality and innovation. This resulted in an overall decline of the quality of Maserati's cars which further contributed to the decline in sales and brand reputation. The company's focus on cutting costs meant that the once proud brand was now viewed as a pale shadow of its former self. And it became increasingly difficult for Maserati to compete with newer, more innovative luxury car manufacturers. And even the racing teams had to retire from doing motorsports altogether. In the 1980s, Maserati was acquired by Ferrari. And under new ownership, everything seemed to be going better, with a new lineup, more focus on quality and overall customer satisfaction went up. During this time, Maserati introduced amazing cars such as the Maserati MC12 and later on the Quattroporte, Gran Turismo and Ghibli. But then things took a turn for the worse once again. Maserati's sales couldn't keep up with the competition and the quality went down once again, while their prices went up. The lack of innovation also increased. The Quattrotope, Gran Turismo and Ghibli has been in the lineup since 2013 with little to no redesigns or upgrades over the years. Maserati didn't introduce any new cars and they quickly became irrelevant. Just to make a comparison, in the same period from 2013 to 2020, Ferrari introduced around 17 new models while Maserati only introduced one new model. Maserati is in its last life and they know this and they are not giving up easily. To look at how Maserati are reintroducing itself, we have to look at their lineup which currently includes the same Quattroporte and Ghibli as they had in 2013. However, these have undergone a few upgrades and changes. But there are three new cars to the lineup, the Levante, Grecale and MC20. The Levate has been in their lineup since 2016, but in 2021, Maserati made a huge change to this SUV, making a hybrid version and upgrading all of the quality of this car. The same has happened to the Quattroporte and the Ghibli, with a few visual changes as well. But the two cars that are really making headlines for Maserati at this point in time are the MC20 and the Grecale. The Maserati MC20 is designed to get Maserati back on track. This car has received excellent reviews from journalists who were pleasantly surprised by the car's quality. The design is also completely unique, separating it from other Maseratis. This car is more of a modern, 
with an aggressive look and it just looks like a supercar designed to perform. This car has a 3 liter V6 engine with 630 horsepower. The Maserati's body is also extremely lightweight with a fiber monocue weighing in at roughly 1500 kilos. This enables the car to go from 0 to 100 km an hour in just 2.9 seconds and reach a top speed of more than 325 km an hour. The Maserati Grecale is their new SUV, which is a part of the plan for Maserati to take back their crown. Both cars have been praised for using high quality materials that give the real feel of luxury and exclusivity that Maserati used to have. Maserati have also taken a lot of pride in the new innovations. On Maserati's own website under the innovation chapter, they highlight features such as a head-up display, a multi-purpose clock, good digital screens, and safety features such and safety features such as assisted braking systems and cruise control. But personally, I don't see this as innovative at all, since most newer cars like the Ford S Max had has all of these features since its 2020 model and that car doesn't come with a price tag of $100,000. Now the question is are these two models as well as the upgrades to the old ones going to save Maserati? It's hard to say especially since most buyers of the MC20 and Grecale haven't received the cars yet so we don't know how reliable they are actually going to be. But one thing is for sure they have definitely stepped up their game, made new designs models and improve the overall quality of their cars but it's still a car far away from its old glory let me know what you think about maserati and their new cars if you enjoyed this video i think you're going to love this one about why porsche doesn't race in formula one don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for your time and have a nice day